Good evening. Good evening, Matt. Yes. Let's hear good evening through your mask. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Beverly Kosham, chair of the RCC Board of Governors. And those of you who are here are seated and keeping the good public health practices. Um, if you haven't yet signed in for the evening's hearing, please do so. Over with BB, I guess, back there. We appreciate also that you keep your face covering on through the evening unless you are speaking. Thank you and welcome. I apologize on behalf of the board and staff for the lack of our usual hospitality for this event. Like so many of the familiar features of life as we knew it, the food and beverages we enjoy having for our patrons represent a risk. So we are foregoing our usual spread for this year. Hopefully a cookie and a soft drink will tide us all over. We will try to be considerate of people's time since you are probably all very hungry. Before we proceed, I think a moment of silence is in order. RCC lost our longtime friend and employee, Ivan Cole, this past April. And we are keenly aware of the suffering of our community during the pandemic. Let's take the time to remember loved ones with our memories and prayers. Thank you. Now I'd like you to meet our board members who are here tonight. Starting is Lori Dodd over there. Not a board member, but our executive director, Lila Gordon. Bill Penniman. Paul Thomas. I can recognize you all, even with your mask. Behind me, Bill Keefe, Dick Stilson, Bill Bowie, Ricky, Vicki, Vicki Wingert, and Lisa, I'm sure, will be here yeah. shortly. She's not coming. Okay, we're missing one, Lisa. As you can see from the agenda, we are following our normal approach to this required hearing, except for reviewing RCC's COVID-19 response for you. And we hope that we never have to do that task again. And now I will introduce our executive director, Lila Gordon, to walk through the coming slides. Thank you, Bev. You should all have copies of the RCC June 2020 annual report. It's bittersweet for us because it describes our 2019 results. And sadly, we were compiling that content just as COVID-19 hit us in March. So it's like a journey back in time when we were operating at full capacity. Uh, I won't read these slides to you. You have the report and the slides to review. But I do want to take a moment to recognize the superb work of the staff of RCC who are represented here tonight. So I'd like to recognize B.B. Wynn, who is at the table, and she is joined there with Haroon Rashid. Our B.B. is our Director of Communications. Haroon is our Network Analyst. This is Fred Russo, our Building Engineer. Um, Pam Leary, who is our Customer Relations Director. In front of her is Karen Goff, who is our Public Information Officer. Seated next is Renata Wojcicki, who's our Director of Finance, Karen Bruchet, who's our Director of Leisure and Learning, Matt McCall, who's our Director of Aquatics, Paul Douglas McNevich, our Arts and Events Director, Haroon, I mentioned, and John Blevins, our Deputy Director. And I really, um, 
I couldn't be more proud to serve. And Brian Gannon, our facility services director, is seated at the laptop back there. Our videographer, Rebecca Wingert, is filming. Mark Andes, who is our assistant theater technical director, is manning the soundboard for tonight. And these staff represent all of our different departments and cost centers and literally hundreds of employees who work tirelessly every day to bring programs and services to Reston and who have been creating and recreating, designing and redesigning programs and services to address how we are going to be recreating until we have a better situation on the public health front. So I would be very happy if you would all give them a round of applause. Because <laughs> they've earned it. <laughs> um, I would be remiss not to mention that the 2019 community survey was vital to our understanding of community needs. I remind everybody that it's posted online at restoncommunitycenter.com. And it contains valuable information, not just for us, but for our community partners as well. It was also very exciting to see the Terry L. Smith Aquatic Center reopen on January 27th. That was a bit later than we wanted, but very welcome. And sadly, that lasted about a month <laughs> before we had to close again. But please read the annual report. Those highlights uh, are efforts of which we are all very proud. Um, Looking ahead, RCC's challenges are complicated by the COVID-19 pandemic. When we would have been busy with focus groups and community engagement meetings this year, we've been in an entirely different mode. Because of how important community feedback and input are for the formulation of a new agency strategic plan, we will extend the timeline for that effort to assure we are able to achieve robust engagement and discussion. And that means we may not have a fully adopted strategic plan uh, for the coming five years until roughly January of 2022, depending, again, on how long uh, the pandemic stymies us. Um, we will be formally told about our success in achieving accreditation from the Commission on Accreditation of Park and Recreation Agencies in October. But the CAPRA visit occurred in May of this year and was handled with a five-day virtual visit. RCC's CAPRA visit report indicated that we were exempted from one of the 152 standards. This was a standard having to do with a vehicle fleet. We don't have a vehicle fleet and we don't intend to have a vehicle fleet, so they exempted us from that standard. But we met the remaining 151 standards and I just want to um, share also, we met two optional standards, one having to do with having a social media um, procedural uh, document for staff to follow and the other one for having a concussion protocol. Those aren't official CAPRA standards yet, but um, we do have those things. We're, we're ready for the next CAPRA visit in five years. Um, of interest to some of you, we continue to create criteria for a new website design, and that continues to include a comprehensive calendar function for both RCC events and community events from across uh, Reston's many event providers. We had to switch gears from normal to bizarre, along with the rest of the country in mid-March. These are timeline highlights of our COVID-19 milestones since then. Um, one of the chief efforts we have undertaken is to create virtual content. We're not alone. Many public agencies have endeavored to do that. But we have some 50 plus films of various lengths and content available on the RCC YouTube channel. And every week we try to put up something more there that is helpful and interesting for families and individuals to enjoy. On this slide, you can see that we refunded, as painful as it was, <laughs> every single penny of patron pay payments that were affected by COVID-19. It was a heartbreaking and time-consuming task, but it was greatly appreciated by our patrons, and it was accomplished very expeditiously. 
And here too, you will see the fiscal assumptions we are using as we approach the budget planning and execution for FY21 and FY22. And that is to be extremely conservative until we have a better feel for how the tax base revenue is going to arrive and at what levels and how our program performance will um, occur and at what levels. As many of you may already know, RCC is charged to present a three-year plan for capital project or capital maintenance spending. Um, we'll walk through those slides in a moment, but I would like to note that the board and staff approach our budget planning conservatively and we keep these goals firmly in mind. The prior assumptions you saw regarding revenue projections have been reviewed by the Fairfax County Chief Financial Officer and while Joe Mondoro noted he doesn't yet have a crystal ball to tell him what the actual revenue payments will be or what will happen to real estate valuations, he felt that these were sound assumptions for the moment given what we know now. And we will be constantly reviewing our status on a monthly basis to be sure that we remain fiscally secure. Now we come to the CIP CMP. And it's hard, yes, it's always arresting for us too. Um, I hope you all have the slides in front of you. I think it's gonna be easier to read these from your seat than from the screen. Um, our capital improvement and capital maintenance project planning is a fluid process. And normally we're constrained by the activity level in our buildings from being able to accomplish capital projects outside a narrow window of time in mid-August to early September. This year, we do anticipate that we will have more flexibility given the reduced level of activities in our facilities. Of note for RCC Hunters Woods is that we are deferring replacement of the rooftop unit, this is an air conditioning unit, to coincide with the phase three roof replacement. And we will couple those projects when we arrive at a moment when all the work that we need to accomplish with respect to the LED lighting conversion has reached a suitable point. At present, both the roof and the AC unit on it are holding up well with the occasional repair needed. We will reallocate some funding to unanticipated concrete work we must undertake in order to embed the assistive listening and aisle lighting in the floor under the new theater seating array in the center stage. We don't have final estimates on that requirement yet, but the outside cost parameter is in the realm of the $60,000 that's noted here. Um, the new room dividers are for these rooms, room one through four here, uh, adjacent to the community room. Those are more than 20 years old. Um, and the FY22 projects are necessary, but these costs are based on preliminary estimates. Next, we have uh, the theater projects, and I can report with great happiness that the center stage floor replacement project is at long last finished. Um, we do continue to replace all the lighting in the theater with LED instruments on a phased basis. We anticipate that will continue to occur for another year or two years, depending on our resources and the technology developments. We do have a new projection screen, and of course the big project this year is the replacement of the center stage seats. The new st seats, say that fast, will be fewer, wider, <laughs> bowing to the realities of the COVID-40, I guess, uh, and with a pinch more legroom between rows. Um, in FY22, we anticipate replacing the rigging line sets and the current projection equipment. At RCC Lake Ann, nearly all the reviews on the new gallery configuration are extremely positive. The next renovation effort there will be in response basically to the comments we got on our community survey that suggested the restrooms at RCC Lake Ann are sorely in need of updated design and replacement of those fixtures. And finally, although we haven't yet officially closed the aquatics project, we have a high confidence level about the savings we will realize. What remains to be done involves the extensive paperwork associated with project completion. 
When the closeout occurs, the significant amount you see here, the $800,000, will be restored to the agency fund balance. And now just a word, as we offer every year, about carryover. It's often a source of confusion. Essentially, carryover means that project balances for work that continues from one fiscal year to the next are carried over into the new fiscal year and become part of that budget. In addition for projects that may not have been started yet, those budget amounts will also be carried over to the next budget year, so the project is funded and the money available for the moment that the work can begin. This FY21 amount is the total of all encumbered and unencumbered balances from the FY20 budget. This amount is added to the listed FY21 project amounts for the total of the FY21 capital project budget. The total here for FY22 is the total of the new projects assigned to that fiscal year. And yes, it is challenging to track. We talked last year at this time about the fact that we have acquired a new software platform for the um, amalgamation of all of our assets and their repair schedule, the maintenance processes, all of those elements are collected into this one uh, software product. It's called Asset Essentials, and we have blessedly achieved that implementation of that software and are using it now to manage our inventory of assets, but as well our maintenance and uh, project results. And now I will let our treasurer, Paul Thomas, walk you through the budget slides. Paul. Thank you, Lila. <laughs> and nearsighted, so uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Lila. Uh, this slide provides the three years of actual revenues and expenditures most recently completed. Since this year's public hearing is being held in August instead of June, this three-year snapshot contains the most recently completed fiscal year's picture. Of note, we voted to increase the cap on the capital projects reserve amount from $3 million to $3.5 million, recognizing that costs for major facility systems or features continually increase. Here are our budget outlines for the next two fiscal years. Again, we're using a factor of 80% of the February 2019 Department of Tax Administration real estate taxes performance to estimate revenue from taxes in both fiscal years. Also, for fiscal year 21, we are estimating revenue from fees will be 20% of what we achieved in fiscal year 19. For fiscal year 22, we hope we'll be back to more normal functions, but we're still forecasting revenue at only 50% of the fiscal year 19 total. As you can see from the scope of the refunds, much of which uh, will be part of the 29, uh, fiscal year 21 revenue performance, it's reasonable to believe the impact of COVID-19 is going to continue to be significant. Similarly, we're going to closely monitor spending. The Finance Committee will meet regularly to review month-to-month -month results, and if needed, further adjust our spending and priorities. Of note, if the fiscal year 22 picture does turn around and look much better, we will have loaded a cushion of $300,000 into the budget in an administrative cost center to be tapped if we can begin expanding programs and services to more traditional levels. That way, we'll be able to be responsive to community needs should those arise. And our financial picture looks sufficiently stable to enable new spending to meet them. Also note that we show here how the anticipated savings for the aquatics renovation project will return to the agency bottom line in fiscal year 21. Here is how that all plays out in the format the county uses for presentation of our fund statement. The program revenue estimates for fiscal year 21 and 22 are aggregated here. The staff will reconfigure that to assign revenue targets to the various program cost centers prior to the budget submission. Given the challenges of COVID-19 and the needs of the community, we will likely once again use our reserve funds to support our costs. We did this during the last recession and it enables us to provide the support to the community that sustains the initiatives you heard about earlier this evening. And again, the estimates we are making are very conservative and we will monitor the budget execution in real time to adjust if we need to do so. 
the board feels confident that RCC resources are sufficient to sustain our programs and services, adapt them to conform to public safety requirements, and deploy them to support our community's needs. Families are struggling with the impacts of the many challenges created by COVID-19, and RCC is ready to be part of the support system. Now I'll turn this back over to Lila. Thank you, Paul. Um, so, although we're doing this a couple months later, the same milestones and related actions will occur with respect to the budget submission. It's your turn now. Um, please leave a written statement with us or email it if you'd like so we can be as accurate as possible in representing your views. And of course, people can submit their views at any time to us at rccontact at fairfaxcounty.gov. Um, we'll get started. Remember that our uh, ground rules are that individuals speaking on behalf of themselves have up to three minutes, and individuals representing an organization have up to five minutes. Um, it's always been our practice if somebody has a question that's simple and straightforward and that we can easily answer here tonight, we'll be happy to answer it. Um, and if we can't, we will get back to you with an answer as quickly as we can. And I just would say for those of you who are lining up to speak, I ask you to please leave six feet between you and the person behind you. So do we have anyone who would like to step up to the microphone first to offer some input or feedback. Okay, Chris, tell, please say your name and your address so that we can be- Chris Rusick uh, is in Reston, Virginia, just off Glade. I volunteer, on Santa, I've been volunteering for two years at Community Coffee. Just wondering how, if they're gonna be replacing, updating the coffee machines. It's a lot of stuff has a lot of problems lately, past few months, past couple of years. Uh, it's not on our plans, but we'll certainly take it into, into consideration this, and, and see if we need to. Some of the pots leak. Okay, thanks for letting us know. Thank you, Chris. In case people don't know, Chris is one of our most stalwart volunteers and he mans the coffee and donut and bagel service on Saturday mornings here. So he probably knows more about our coffee machines than anybody else in the building. So thanks for that. Anyone else? Sure, Robert. Good evening. Uh, I'm Bob Petrine. I live at 2503 Foxcroft Way, and I'm speaking as an individual this evening. One of the challenges that we all face in, in today's environment is trying to find our way through all the mountain of information. And I, um, and I, as I get older, I have more and more difficulty finding things. I had a very difficult time finding information on how to sign up and finally was able to figure it out this afternoon by calling. So that's one thing. And as <clears throat> a, a person who's worked in finance for a long time, I would like to see more data or more detail on the financials. Um, one of my other jobs is treasurer for RA. And it's a challenge that we all have to balance giving people a complete picture versus getting down into the, the pennies. And I would like to see, uh, and I would like to see it in my own organization uh, that I'm responsible for better, better financial reporting. And those are the two things. Thank you very much. Thanks. And I would just point out that our year-end FY20 um, spreadsheets are posted on our website on the Board of Governors page. And that has the, uh, year-end results posted by cost center in each category. So perhaps some of the detail that you're seeking is located there. <laughs> That's okay. Another one of the challenges is to, um, is 
uh, as uh, Bill pointed out at the, at the last planning meeting in January, we want to get to two, two or three clicks to find information that would be very helpful. Um, and we face that challenge as well, because it's very, there's so much information that you want to provide people, and if they have a hard time, they assume it's not there, and I'm one of those as well. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's two clicks from our home page. So if you just scroll down the Board of Governors page, you should see it within the top three items under the documents, the current documents list. But I'll also be happy to send it to you as a separate uh, PDF if you'd like. Okay. <laughs> okay, go, go treasure hunting. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, uh, since we're in the age of COVID, I, I don't think we wanna hold people here any longer than we have to. If, if truly no one else wants to offer any input or feedback tonight, um, uh, I will ask for a board motion to instruct the staff in terms of budget guidance moving forward, and then we will um, move to the conclusion of the hearing. So on Bev's behalf, I'll say it's been moved and second that the, the staff continue to pursue the budget submission process based on the outlines we've presented tonight, which we will do. And then the, the board will have the final approval of the FY22 budget submission transmittal memorandum at their September 8th Board of Governors meeting, which starts at eight o'clock. So between now and then, if anyone has ideas or feedback or input, or you know of anyone who does, and I'm sure there are people who do, um, please feel free to direct them to RCC contact at fairfaxcounty.gov. So on behalf of the board and the staff, thank you all for coming. Please, please take a, a wrapped and protected cookie or brownie with you when you leave and we greatly appreciate your participation this evening. <laughs>